hello everybody. So um, today we'll be uh, talking of another consequence of special relativity. So we'll do uh, subtopics in relativistic kinematics. Um, and uh, if one recalls, um, we had to redefine mass. Uh, we had this uh, famous mass energy equivalence. Special relativity gives us that. And we also had to redefine mass um, so as to preserve the uh, conservation of momentum, conservation of momentum in relativity. And talking of both uh, energy and momentum, uh, how are they related? Uh, we know that E is equal to mc square and then uh, this m or the total mass of a body, that's, it's actually related with uh, the speed at, at which this body is moving, okay? So if m0, which you see here, is the rest mass of a body, um, then if it's moving at a certain velocity v, uh, its mass becomes m divided by root over of 1 minus v square by c square. Okay, fine. And consequently, we also have the momentum defined as the mass uh, multiplied by the velocity, but then the mass again here is uh, velocity dependent. Okay, so how about uh, the relation between them? Uh, why don't we square them up and uh, you know, if we square the energy and then uh, uh, multiply a c square to the momentum, uh, do a bit of algebra, um, it turns out, and then we and then we subtract um, p square c square from uh, the uh, the square of the energy. It turns out that uh, we get something which is uh, which is um, Lorentz invariant or in other words it doesn't change when you change frames or the, the, it doesn't change in frames which are moving uh, with a certain um, uh, constant velocity with respect to each other. So you actually get uh, m0 c square and the m0 being the rest mass of your body and then c square being the velocity of uh, the c being the velocity of light here, okay. That's pretty interesting. So uh, if we now write it in a certain way, actually if we write all these things in the dimension of momentum square, we get a nice relation like um, you get an E square that's the total energy square divided by the velocity of light square that gets the, uh, uh, that's get the dimension of, uh, that gets the dimension of momentum square that is, uh, that's the linear momentum square that we're talking of here. And and, and then you subtract uh, uh, the, uh, the momentum, that, uh, which I denote by small p, okay? You get something which is invariant, okay? Now, this I uh, denote uh, by something like uh, the capital P squared, okay? And uh, just make a comment that still uh, this is momentum squared, that's all. So let's see, is there something behind all these things? Okay, and to check that, uh, what is there behind? Uh, uh, we, uh, if you recall, what what was a three momentum squared? Okay, so if you know a three momentum squared, think of the thing in the Cartesian system or in any the Cartesian. Okay, the Cartesian system. So um, what you see, the three momentum squared, you get the x component squared, the y component squared, and the z component squared, or component one, two, three squared each. If you add them up, you get an invariant quantity. And you all know that this momentum is a vector, it has three components. Uh, similarly, the thing that we talk of, uh, when we talk of a four momentum, uh, we have, uh, we can also talk of something uh, called a four momentum squared. And then uh, what do we get? And if you define uh, the dot product, of or, or a, we we define a dot product for the case of a four momentum as you know the initial the zeroth component we call one of the component the first component with zeroth component and the other three components which are equivalent to the usual um, the vector in the three dimension that we all know of and then we define the four momentum uh, the square of the four momentum with the help of uh, the special dot product. That's why when I say a dot product, I don't put a simple dot, but a rather bigger dot, okay? So that's equal to actually P0 square minus the, uh, the three dot product of the, uh, the momentum, the linear momentum that is here, what we have here. 
okay. Now, why do we call it as the four momentum? Uh, more of it a little later. Uh, but here what we see is that if we identify uh, this P0 of the 0th component of the four momentum as E by C and then the other three components as the linear momentum itself, then what we get is the um, dot product of this or this, uh, this four momentum dot product shown by P capital P dot capital P is still an invariant quantity. Okay. Now, uh, the notation that I will be using is um, for a small p, it will always be uh, the 3 momentum. Uh, if I put a vector, you also know that it is a 3 momentum vector. But for a 4 momentum vector, not put any, um, any vectors on top of it. And uh, not only that, I will always uh, use capital uh, letters for it. So, so, capital P is a 4 momentum and then the small p is the 3 momentum uh, that we talk of here. But it is also interesting that uh, we know that um, the uh, 3 momentum square, that is an invariant quantity, okay, uh, where, you know, the, uh, the dot product or, or, or when you take the uh, square of, uh, of a vector, you get the length of a vector, which is a which is scalar. So, so that is an invariant quantity. Um, similarly, what we see here is that when we take the dot product of the four momentum with itself, we also get an invariant quantity. Okay, that's something to think about. Okay. Now, uh, let's let's uh, recall a few more things about the four momentum, which we may have covered earlier. But uh, given today's topic of relativistic kinematics, I thought it would be useful for us to view a bit of the four momentum formalism again a bit. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, just to recall, uh, we can also think of uh, uh, the relativistic phenomenon in, in, in Minkowski uh, space time, okay, where an event is given by an, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by an event or a world point is specified by four quantities, three space quantities, uh, one uh, time coordinate. Okay. Of course, you can multiply the uh, constant velocity of light to time so that you have the dimension of length for all the, for all the coordinates. Okay. And then that is what we do. Uh, we can simply multiply c to the time coordinate and then we have x, y, z, let us say. So, the four space, co uh, three space coordinates. And then we have the same uh, dimension for all. And then we can simply write uh, x0 to be the 0th component and the other three components for the other three, um, uh, other three, three vector here. Okay. Now, it is also interesting when I take the uh, squared norm or then the, the four dot product of x with itself, I will get uh, c squared t square minus x dot x uh, like the four dot product we had uh, done earlier for the momentum. And uh, how does the components change when we go from one system to another? Let us say we go from the S frame where you have uh, the coordinate C t at, at a certain time and then x, y, z. And then the same event if it is measured uh, with the help of uh, from S prime frame. Um, and then you think of that frame as uh, and, and, and you measure it at a certain time t prime and x prime, y prime and z prime. Of course, you now know that these are related by uh, Lorentz transformations. Okay, so the components of this four vector is actually related by Lorentz transformations, which we have um, covered earlier. And um, uh, it's actually okay. Just to recall, let's let's read the first line. So it's the uh, how is um, the x component um, in the s prime frame related with the x component with the s frame? You see that uh, let us x, pri x prime is actually equal to gamma times um, x minus beta c t. Okay, so, where beta is the velocity with which the s prime frame is moving divided by the speed of light. Okay, and then the gamma which you see here is nothing but the uh, 1 by the square root of 1 minus uh, beta squared. Okay. okay, so what is also interesting is that if one takes uh, the uh, four dot product, okay, the four dot product in the S frame and the S prime frame, can easily check that 
uh, its norm is equal. Okay, that's again something uh, we keep in mind. It's that the norm of a four vector is uh, is is becoming in uh, what what we check is uh, for this in, uh, is is becoming invariant when when uh, is actually invariant when you go from one frame to another. Okay. Now, just as an aside, we can also recall that the uh, norm of a three vector is also um, invariant uh, when you change frames. Okay. Okay. So, uh, to make things a little bit more general, uh, we um, we call all quantities, or rather, uh, all quantities which has four sets of um, sets of numbers here. Now, and if they transform, and if they transform in the same way as uh, as Lorentz, Lorentz transformations, and not only that, that the squared norm of 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 such a quantity a is become uh, becomes same whether you are in s frame or the s prime frame, then such a thing are actually uh, four vectors. Okay, and to summarize, what we have is that we have a four. If a is a four vector in s frame. Then in the s prime frame, uh, the same four vector uh, will have, of course, the same norm, but its components will change. Okay, but but the components will change in accordance with what? With accordance with uh, the Lorentz transformations. Okay, so that's what uh, we have. The components of a four vector will change. Uh, you know, uh, the components are related by the Lorentz transformations, and then. Uh, the, uh, the norm is invariant. Fine. So, uh, just to put things in perspective again, if we talk of a four vector, the momentum four vector here, okay, so the zeroth component is E by C, that is the energy by C, and then Px, Py, Pz are the other three components. Then in the S prime frame, which is moving with a certain uh, constant velocity V with respect to the S frame. The uh, the components will be different. Okay, of course it will be different, but the norms of uh, the uh, four vectors would be the same. Okay, so um, now you know just as an aside, why do we call it as a four vector? Okay, uh, recall what we have in a three-dimension space. Okay, so when we have a vector, so what is a vector? So, if we recall what a vector is, it is actually that uh, mathematical physical entity which has three components here as a three vector, that is why it is called a three vector. Now, uh, a vector, uh, what is the special property of it? It is that if one changes, um, uh, goes from one coordinate system to another, now the uh, transformation matrix uh, which one has to use to go from one frame to another, okay, that same transformation matrix is uh, going to change the same vector which is in the old system to the new system. For example, here in this example, if uh, x is a vector in O system and uh, x prime is a vector in the O prime system. See the transformation matrix which is transforming O to O prime uh, will be the same which transforms X to X prime. And not only that, the length of this uh, vector is actually the same, that is a scalar. Okay? So that does not change when you change uh, coordinate systems. And if you recall what we have just talked of this quote unquote four vector, uh, see some uh, amazing properties which are quite similar with the three vector. First of all, it has got four components. And then um, the the um, the components of the um, you know when you go from one system to another, the what is the transformation matrix here? It's the Lorentz transformations, and it's the same Lorentz transformations which is um, transforming the components of uh, of of this quantity x or this four vector um, from one system from one frame to another, and not only that, its norm is fixed. Okay. Okay, so uh, that of course justifies the word, the vector here, what you have used, uh, and uh, and also uh, it has four components. That's why you call it a four vector. Okay, so uh, with this, let's uh, with this uh, background. Now I think uh, we can uh, go over to an, an application. Uh, 
uh, of uh, relativistic kinematics, okay, where let us take a, a simple example, let us study uh, two body collisions. Okay. Now, uh, as in classical mechanics, we can study this in the lab system and also in the uh, center of mass system. Okay. So, what is a lab system? Uh, when, when we consider uh, the collision of two bodies, okay, so the lap system is one in which one of the bodies it has rest, rest and the other comes and hits it. Okay. To keep things simple, I mean uh, we just take the direction of motion of uh, one of these bodies, of the one which is moving to be along the x axis okay, and it is on a plane let us say. Okay. Anyway, um, we also take um, one of the bodies at rest. So, let us just take uh, the body B at rest and the, uh, the body A uh, which is coming uh, with a certain linear momentum uh, P A. And if you see we have also put a subscript L and also a vector. So, that is uh, that's an indication um, P A L. So, that is the indication the P has a vector. So, that is a 3 vector and it is related with uh, the first body A and then it is in the lab system. So, that is the quantity L, that is the reason I put this quantity L. Now, what would be the four vector for such a quant uh, for, uh, for these bodies? Okay. If um, recall that uh, the zeroth component of the four vector relates with the energy. Okay. Um, so, we have the energy of particle A in or the body A in the lab system divided by C that is the speed of light and then the other three components are the three vectors okay, uh, or the three components of a three vector. Okay, and what is E A L? So, that is nothing but M A into C square okay, that is the mass of A. And then what about P B L? Uh, that is the, uh, that's the four vector P B L. So, recall that again uh, it is it's at rest. So, the uh, 3 momentum part of it is 0, okay. but it is interesting that um, the, its energy is not 0. Why? Because of course, it has rest mass and then you have rest mass energy. So, you have mb into c square that will be the rest mass energy. Okay. Now, if you take uh, mb c square divided by c, you get mb c and so you get uh, the 4 vector pbl that is capital pbl to be M B C and then the uh, since the 3 vector part is 0, so we have it 0. Okay. So, there is of course another system in which um, we go over to the center of mass of the system. So, all the measurements are being made from the center of mass of the system here and um, um, in this particular case, we have the case in which uh, the bodies are moving in a such a way that the total linear momentum turns out to be 0 here. Okay. So, the same collision process you are looking at a frame, you are looking uh, in a way in which the both are moving towards each other in a such a way that the sum of their linear momentum are 0. Okay. And it is easy how to write uh, the, uh, the momentum four vectors here for P A notice that I have not used any uh, subscript L here. So, uh, except maybe uh, when I, uh, uh, so only the subscript for the um, bodies or the particles have been used here. So, the other subscript the CM is not required, it will be a superfluous thing. So, if uh, I do not write it, it means that it is in center of mass system. Otherwise, it is assumed that I it is in the lab system when I write it uh, by this um, letter L. So, the um, four momentum P A that is the uh, zeroth component we know that is E A by C again all quantities uh, in the center of mass system and then uh, the three vector that is the P A and then for the capital P B that is the four momentum for uh, the uh, particle B um, that is uh, E B by C and then it is got a three momentum P B. Okay. So, how are they related with each other? Remember. So, the center of mass system can be thought to be moving uh, with a certain constant velocity v with respect to the lab system. And then if our incident direction of collision is the x axis, um, you know, so 
we just have we just written the s frame or the s prime frame we just renamed them as l and l frame that's the left frame and the center of mass frame respectively here so in the left frame notice that the uh, particle b or the body b is at rest and uh, the particle a is coming and coming towards it with a certain momentum velocity and uh, certain energy here okay kinetic energy element of course uh, for particle b here in the lab system although it doesn't uh, it, may, it might recall you might recall that it it it, it has uh, some energy which is the which is associated with the rest mass energy and then in the center of mass frame what we have we have uh, the particles moving with uh, momenta towards each other equal momenta so that they are opposite oppositely directed and and when you add them up they cancel out okay so how are the things related with each other recall that the coordinates in the lab and the center of mass frame they are uh, they are lorentz frames here so they are uh, um, they are related by the lorentz transformations okay and uh, what about the components of the four vector of the four four momentum so since it's also a four vector momentum we are we are talking of the components of a momentum four vector the components uh, will transform according to Lorentz transformation itself. Okay, so uh, it's interesting that it's very easy. You can you can find out if the uh, momentum of any particle is, uh, uh, is uh, you know one of them in the left frame, and the in the other frame and that's in the center of mass frame, which is moving with a constant relative velocity with respect to the left frame. You can simply find it out by. Uh, by by the help of Lorentz transformation, that's the relation between the lab and the center of mass uh, momenta, and of course the energy. The energy being the zeroth component here. Okay, it's simple here. For example, uh, the uh, the if p x is the uh, momentum in the small p x, that's the uh, linear momentum along the x axis in the center of mass system, and then e is just the energy in the center of mass system. Then the p x l that's the uh, x component of the momentum in the lab system is related with the help of Lorentz transformation that's gamma times p x plus beta e by c okay so it's just the uh, and then since it's uh, we have taken the motion to be along x axis so the x the y and the z components are the same here okay and uh, what about the energy part Remember, this is the uh, for the. Uh, remember, this 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 transforms like the uh, time-like components or the CT component when uh, when we are doing the uh, the position for vector. Okay, so what's the energy in the lab system? So that's simply related uh, with the energy in the center of mass system uh, by if E L is the energy in the lab system, E L by C that's actually equal to gamma times E by C. So E being the energy of the center of mass system uh, plus beta times Px, Px being the x component of the three momentum in the center of mass system. Okay, fine. So uh, what's this velocity then with which the center of mass is moving with respect to the lamp? Okay, what's this velocity? How can we estimate it? with the help of uh, known components with the help of known quantities like the mass of the the particles in the lab system and in the linear momentum of the particles in the lab system okay so let's find it out and to do that what we can do is that uh, we can simply apply uh, the conservation of um, a linear momentum and uh, the conservation of momentum and also conservation of energy and we'll simply uh, take them out from there okay by by adding uh, the corresponding quantities uh, for for these two particles okay okay so first let's do the conservation momentum conservation first for the um, for the momentum uh, for the for, for both these particles okay and um, what we find is that if we add these two quantities in the lab system and then of course we relate them to what these quantities are in the center of mass system. So what we see is that we add uh, P A X, that's the X component in the lab system for particle A and P B um, X L, that's the um, 
um, that's the uh, x component of the um, of the of the second particle b in the lab system. Um, by the way, remember that it's actually uh, actually zero. That the x component uh, that the uh, that the momentum of um, that the uh, momentum of particle b is zero. So p b x l that's actually zero. Okay, so that's equal to gamma times p a plus p b plus beta times E A plus E B by C. Now P A plus P B, so that is 0 in the center of mass frame and, uh, and then but uh, the energies E A plus E B, how are they related? Let us simply call them as a total energy in the center of mass frame. Okay? In that case, we get a rather simple looking relation which relates uh, the, the, component, uh, the component, the momentum of A, that is P A X L uh, in um, in, in the lab system with the uh, total energy in the uh, center of mass system. And remember what is this beta? Beta is nothing but velocity with which the center of mass frame is moving divided by the velocity of flight. And then gamma is another kinematical quantity related with beta. And then the C here is the velocity of flight, okay, or the speed of flight if you wish. Um, again from energy conservation. Uh, we simply add up the energies in the lab system and then corresponding and then you equate that with the corresponding quantities with the corresponding expressions in the center of mass system. And um, we simply uh, also use the uh, also use the uh, uh, also use the quantity that the total momentum, the linear momentum in the center of mass system is zero. Then we also get um, a rather interesting quantity. Okay, what is it? that the total energy in the, in the center of mass system and the total energy in the lap system, how are they related? Okay, you simply take it out from this relation. But again from the conservation of uh, momentum, we have seen that the uh, total energy in the center of mass system can be related with the total momentum in the lab system. Now we can use that relation again to to, to drive out little, some other quantities here. And then from, uh, from these two equations, the one which relates the total center of mass and the lab energies and then the one which relates the, uh, the uh, total center of mass energies with the lab momentum of particle A, we can find out what the velocity with which the uh, center of mass frame is moving with respect to the lab system. We can simply work out that it is nothing but uh, c squared times, I mean, uh, times the uh, uh, times the linear uh, momentum of uh, the particle A divided by the total energy with which the um, uh, the uh, the particle A is moving plus the rest mass um, uh, less mass energy of particle B. Okay, so you have everything with respect. To, so with, with, in terms of everything that you started with, uh, in, in terms of all lab system quantities. Okay, so what about the collision process? Uh, we have not used the four vectors as yet. Okay, we have just used the conservation of linear momentum and the conservation of uh, uh, conservation of energy separately, and we have found out this velocity. Now, what if we use the uh, conservation of uh, the uh, the four momenta in in the lab and the center of mass system? So, what do we get from there? Okay. So for that, let us simply add up the four momentum of particle A and particle B and take its norm in the center of mass system. And remember that so the sum of this four vector is also a four vector and then if you take a norm of that, it is going to be, um, it is going to be invariant whether you are in the lab system or the center of mass system. Let us simply call this norm as small s and uh, Given that it's still a four vector, you add two four vectors, you get a you get a you get a four vector. I take its norm, it's Lorentz invariant. So S here is a Lorentz invariant quantity. Then what is it? It's the norm of P A squared. It's it's the, it's the norm of P A. It's the norm of P B. These are the uh, four vector uh, norms plus the uh, four vector dot product twice the four vector dot product of P A and P B. Now we all know how to do uh, these four vector dot products and calculate these norms 
and for example, what's P A squared? That's the four vector of A squared in center of mass system. We know that it's also a, it's E A squared by C squared. That's the energy in of particle A in the center of mass system minus the three vector norm of um, of particle A, and then the the norm of the four vector is nothing but m a squared into c squared. That's the uh, uh, rest mass energy squared of um, th that's the rest mass square of particle A multiplied by c squared. Um, similarly, you can find the um, p b square. That's the norm of uh, the uh, the the vector the four vector uh, for particle B, and then you can also find the uh, the, uh, the four vector dot product of uh, P A and P B, that's nothing but the product of the energies minus the three vector dot product of uh, P A and P B. That's a bit of an algebra. Now when you arrange all these things, put it, uh, plug it back into the expression for S, okay, what you get is that the sum of the uh, so total center of mass energy squared divided by C square minus uh, the uh, minus the uh, P A plus P B whole squared, okay. Now, if you recall that the uh, total moment, uh, the total, the total moment, uh, the three moment, when you add these two up in the uh, in the center of mass system, so that's zero, okay. So uh, the total energy in the center of mass system, which is E A plus E B, is a Lorentz invariant quantity here, okay, and it's and if you put it, put in, uh, if, if it, you know, remove the square here, and you see that it's actually equal to c times root s. Okay, so s being a Lorentz invariant quantity. Okay, so that's a rather important uh, relation we have got here. It's that the total center of mass energy for this two-body collision that we see here is actually a Lorentz invariant quantity. Okay, fine. Now. S again is a Lorentz invariant quantity, so we can also find the thing in the lap system, okay. So we do the thing in the lap system, we take the sum of the four vector in the lap system of particle A and particle B and take its norm, okay. Then do the algebra again, so we have P A L, L stands for the uh, subscript L is uh, telling us that it's in the lap system. P A L squared plus P B L squared and then twice P A L dot P B L, okay. So that's the uh, four vector uh, dot product. Now if we use the uh, norm of the four vectors uh, being invariant in, uh, being invariant here, so we know that the norms and uh, then we also use the uh, algebraic expression for the three, uh, four vector dot products. Um, also remember that the um, and in using the and, 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 in, and in writing the four vector dot product, we just um, remember that the momentum of uh, the second particle here B was 0. So we are not going to have the three momentum part here in the four momentum uh, dot product. And then um, the energy of the particle B uh, in the lab system is just the rest mass energy. So we plug in all these things into the expression for uh, the uh, for the invariant S. Uh, what we get is 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 a quantity which is uh, in terms of the masses and the energies of uh, and then the energy the uh, initial energy of particle A in the lab system. Okay. Just as an aside, what's the uh, kinetic energy of uh, particle A in the lab system? It's just the you you you, uh, you subtract the uh, rest mass uh, respa subtract the rest mass energy from E A L. That's the total energy, and uh, you can you can write the um, the invariant quantity S in terms of the kinetic energy also. Okay. Um, also, we can use a approximation when you are at rather very high energies, things called the ultra relativistic cases, when uh, the momentum of is actually much, much greater than m a times c, that's the, um, that's the rest mass times the velocity of light, okay. If it's rather very big, then how does this expression for the um, invariant s turn out to be? 
and uh, in that case you know that the energy of uh, the total energy of particle A in the lab system is nothing but P A L uh, that is the uh, momentum in the lab system times the uh, times the velocity of light it can be approximated by that because the other quantity that is the, uh, the quantity which depends on the rest mass will be much less compared to this ok. Um, we, we, we may do an example for this to, to check it out whether that is valid or not ok. So, in that case uh, we can simply uh, write uh, the uh, that the total uh, total invariant S in terms of just the lab system momentum for an ultra relativistic case ok. Uh, we also know that the uh, invariant S that we have defined here that we have got here can be written in terms of the center of mass quantities. Remember the total energy squared divided by C squared that is also an invariant quantity actually that was also S ok. So, in this way we can relate the quantities in the center of mass system uh, the energy the total energy in the center of mass system with the uh, total momentum in the uh, in the total three momentum in the um, in the in the uh, lab system. So, in a way it is a it is a it is a method for us to check if you are giving this much amount of momentum in the lab system how much of it goes to the total energy in the center of mass system ok. Ok, so as I said let us do a small example ok. So, here let us uh, consider the collision of uh, two subatomic particles. Let us say we consider the collision of two particles and then um, of rest masses you know the rest mass of a proton is something like 938, 940 MeV by C square, but it is approximately let us take it as 1 GeV by C square. Uh, now and, it, and, and then we consider the collision of this in the center of mass system with uh, three momenta of uh, magnitude 30 GeV by C ok this is actually rather very big ok. So, here you can look at this figure for example, uh, you see that we have these two protons A and B uh, they are coming uh, towards each other with uh, with momenta 3 uh, 30 GeV by C. Now, the question is what is the uh, what is the uh, linear momentum what is the momentum in the uh, lab system which will be necessary so that you have this much amount of momenta in the center of mass system ok. Ok, so we simply let us let us find the center of mass energy of the protons first ok. Now, it will be of course the same the center of mass energies of the mo, uh, of both these protons can be found by simply you know uh, P A squared and C squared plus M P squared C power 4 and then you take every uh, take the whole thing to the power half ok. So, uh, what is that? So, P A squared C square what is that? That is uh, that is 900 30 squared ok. Now, to 900 if you add 1 that is the rest mass rest mass energy is squared ok. It is nothing 900 becomes simply 901. So, if you take the square root of 900 or 901 it is approximately 30 ok. So, it is actually an ultra relativistic case that we are talking here. So, we can neglect the rest mass um, compared to the momenta here ok or rather rest mass times the, uh, the velocity of light compared to the momenta here ok. Now, we also uh, now we, we need to calculate what is the momenta in uh, the uh, in the uh, lab system ok. So, for that let us calculate the invariant Lorentz invariant quantity S we know that that is related with the total center of mass energy squared right. So, S will be 30 plus 30 here because each of these protons have total energies 30 uh, in the center of mass system. So, S is nothing but th th 3600 GeV squared by C squared fine. We can also relate this with uh, we, we've, we have seen how it is related with uh, the the lab system momenta ok that is actually equal to twice the mass of the protons times the velocity of light times the uh, linear momenta ok. Now, if you plug in all these quantities uh, you will get uh, the linear momenta of uh, in the lab system to be right 1800 GeV by C which is huge ok which is rather huge. So, you see 
to get an uh, energy of uh, 30 GeV per C, you need such a huge momenta in the lap system, okay. And this also, and then this number actually justifies the approximations that we have used that uh, of our ultra relativistic case um, in which um, the momenta was considered to be the was much, much larger than uh, the rest mass times the uh, velocity of light here in this case. Okay, so I hope I have uh, convinced or have, um, you know, shown you some examples of relativistic kinematics, more specifically relativistic collisions and uh, the use of um, the four momentum or the power of the use of four momenta in relativistic kinematics. Thank you very much.